Um, my name is Betty Exentaris. I am a senior lecturer and I work at Monash University in Melbourne in Australia. I have an interest in urology. My presentation was about the pharmacological management of bladder outlet obstruction, focusing on the role of current and emerging treatments. The significance of my research is that no pharmacotherapy will work for every man with bladder outlet obstruction as a result of benign prostatic hyperplasia. I discuss the alpha-1 antagonist tamsulosin, that is a drug that is currently prescribed and we know quite a lot about it, but there is still quite a lot to learn. I discuss the phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor sildenafil. Tadalafil is currently prescribed which is a pharmacological agent that was in originally intended for sexual dysfunction, but was cleverly repurposed for the treatment of lower urinary tract symptoms associated with bladder outlet obstruction as a result of benign prostatic hyperplasia. And finally, I discussed oxytocin or oxytocin antagonist rather, as novel emerging pharmacological agents that could be used to not only target bladder outlet obstruction, but also target premature ejaculation. My overall broad interest is to identify different targets to better treat the lower urinary tract symptoms associated with bladder outlet obstruction as a result of benign prostatic hyperplasia. Yes, yeah, sure. So the dynamic component is mediated by changes in smooth muscle contractility. So whether it's neurogenic, which means that it's mediated by nerves, or myogenic, which is mediated by the smooth muscle itself, which is my group's interest. The dynamic component is a key target of several pharmacotherapies, essentially smooth muscle relaxants including alpha-1 antagonists such as tamsulosin and phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors such as tadalafil. What we know about current pharmacological agents is their effect on the neurogenic component of prostate contractility. We actually don't know much about the inherent spontaneous myogenic contractions. So what I mean by that is that the prostate isn't a quiescent organ that just sits there it actively contracts or pulses, if you like. We developed a model of human prostate contractility using well annotated samples of prostate tissue taken from the transition zone of the human prostate. So that's the area where benign prostatic hyperplasia essentially arises and characterized it, noting that the frequency of myogenic contractions is higher in clinically diagnosed benign prostatic hyperplasia samples. Thank you, that's a great question. Briefly, uh, current pharmacotherapies for the treatment of bladder outlet obstruction as a result of benign prostatic hyperplasia, so alpha-1 antagonists or phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors, modulate myogenic contractility with differences in responsiveness correlated with age and prostate volume. For example, older men or those with larger prostates have a greater responsiveness to the alpha-1 antagonist tamsulosin, whereas younger men had a greater responsiveness to the phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor sildenafil. So by increasing our understanding of how pharmacotherapies modulate myogenic tone, we can provide evidence to support a more personalized approach for the treatment of bladder outlet obstruction associated with benign prostatic hyperplasia. And this could even lead to the development of novel pharmacotherapies. For example, our interest in oxytocin, oxytocin analogues and antagonists and their ability to modulate myogenic tone. So oxytocin is an interesting hormone. Oxytocin is well characterized in the uterus of pregnant women 
where it stimulates contractility. In the male, oxytocin is less well characterized. My group has demonstrated that application of oxytocin causes an increase in the myogenic contractions recorded in the transition zone of the human prostate. In contrast, the oxytocin antagonist atoziban significantly reduce the myogenic contractions recorded in the transition zone of the human prostate, suggesting that it's a promising target. However, oxytocin antagonists have also been shown to decrease the contractility of the male reproductive tract, which may therefore affect the ejaculatory process. Interestingly, we could explore oxytocin antagonists for patients with bladder outlet obstruction and premature ejaculation as a comorbidity. Overall, our data suggests that oxytocin is a key regulator of inherent spontaneous myogenic prostate contractions and targeting the oxytocin receptor and associated downstream signaling is an attractive prospect in the development of novel pharmacotherapies for bladder outlet obstruction associated with benign prostatic hyperplasia. Estrogen definitely plays a role in the prostate during development and also in the etiology of prostate diseases such as prostate cancer and benign prostatic hyperplasia as well. My group has investigated the effects of estrogen on the myogenic tone of the human prostate. Estrogen appears to have a rapid non-genomic effect on prostate contractility that we show is mediated by the G protein estrogen receptor GPER. As contractility is significantly upregulated in, in men with bladder outlet obstruction as a result of benign prostatic hyperplasia, which I talked about earlier, changes in the dynamic component, we propose pharmacologically targeting the GPER may be clinically beneficial to help with bladder outlet obstruction as a result of benign prostatic hyperplasia.